Bob's Fix-It Shop. Today I've got something that's kind of interesting. My friend Tom brought this over and asked if I'd take a look at it to see if I could um, get it up and running and, and uh, make it sound nice. It's a Magnavox console stereo. It's got AM FM, so that's pretty fancy. A record player. And um, so I really don't know much about these, but uh, I'm going to open it up and take a look. And uh, if you're interested, I hope come along with me and it'll be fun to kind of open this up and see what makes it tick. So here's a better look at the record player. And uh, just slide this open. Got this nice stereo here. This front looks like it should be able to be opened, but no can do on that. Um, and there we have a logo down there. Now, up on top, you look at the other side, you got storage for records and then speaker switch control there. And that's kind of interesting that that's in a box, but yeah, so I'm going to open up the back and see what's inside. I notice on the inside that it's got a 10 year warranty on the record player. Okay, well, there's quite a bit of dirt and dust in here. And um, here, here you can see the, the model number tag. Let's see if I get the right the model number. And there's a wiring diagram for the speakers. Speakers and I can't really see that up there, but yeah, that's pretty interesting. But look at there's a, a crossover on the speakers, which I consider to be pretty fancy. Um, and then the, the tweeter is a big horn tweeter there, and a pretty good size woofer as well. And then this is just a box, and then the stereo it's a transistor. transistor base but it does have the big can capacitor and um, I mean it looks like like it's kind of one of the first transistor sets um, we'll take a look at that further but here's the other here we have some stuff that's accumulated over the years I don't know and uh, there's the tweeter again and uh, the record player. I don't know if we can get a view of that from underneath. Here's something that's kind of cool. These uh, speaker jacks are on plexiglass. That's super fancy. <laughs> that's, or I guess hip is the right word. And then uh, a little warning for the service man. These bolts here and that one back there are what's holding the chassis in and then um, so I got to pull the knobs there and uh, and this faceplate that should just fall away some very strange numbers there um, but I don't know if you can read it but it's astrosonic stereo high I wonder if it's supposed to say fidelity over there, but it doesn't get to it. But um, yeah, that's cool. And look, it's got a little tuning gauge there. An FM. Yeah, that's cool. I love this thing. Okay, so I just set it down on its back, and you can get a much better look at it. I mean, it's, the light's so much better. And um, here you can see the crossover network which is kind of cool it's it's not just a capacitor but it's got an inductor and a one ohm resistor in it we see the, the cool clear plastic um, connections for external speakers and the antenna we can good good look at that amplifier and the heat sinks for it um, and then uh, 
Yeah, and a record player there. The great big motor on it, that's pretty impressive. What does that say there? I don't know. Here's something kind of interesting. This um, wire right here goes under here. I don't know, it looks like a, a light bulb out the front so you can see when it's on. So it looks like we've got a screw right here, a screw right here that's holding that chassis in. So I put those bottom screws back in. Okay, so I think I'm going to hook this up to my, my little test panel here and um, we'll just see how well it works. I did some researching on it and um, so Shango, who generally is not a fan of just bulk recapping, he said that these caps have to be redone and so I'm going to redo those but I want to see how it works first and I could not find, for this particular model, I could not find a um, schematic or a SAMS, uh, but I did get one that was close and if you look it this particular model has an extra pair of filters and here that's just kind of a tin can I don't know what's going on with that so this might be a cheaper model although it does have uh, a place for a tape record and play which I think later I might hook up to a, uh, a Bluetooth receiver but We'll see about that. Um, but yeah, so it's the, it's close, but it's not perfect. So anyway, let's try hooking it up. Okay, so we're hooked up to my uh, test panel, which I made in another video. Uh, but we'll, we're going to be going into our 8 ohm load, and um, we'll hook up the scope, turn the scope on, and just see what we look like. We do have the the dial string is is busted, so that's a little. We'll have to fix that, but we'll see how this goes. And so I've got my dim bulb tester over there. I'm going through that first. So if anything's shorting, like that big capacitor there, um, we should see that light come on. All right, let's see if it comes on. Okay, yeah, it's not great. Hmm. So it looks like, so I just hooked an FM antenna up to it and I made a world of difference. I feel like every 15 year old's life was ruined. It's 101.3 KDWB, it's E-White. First, of course, like everybody's doing school from home. And then tip and just yourself. That's because his wife and kids are the ones usually picking this up.
That's 1 800 942 40 or search Minnesota WIC. That's Minnesota W I C online. WIC is here for you. And we can you see our tuning gauge is kind of moving there. So we've got some AM, but it's hard to tell with all the interference in here. So now I have my um, signal generator coming into the tape play, and. Um, I think I'm going about two volts peak to peak. Put it on dummy load. It looks like we're clipping a little bit there. Let me try turning this up. Yeah, so we're just clipping at uh, 7.32 volts RMS so that's about six watts but I mean our power transformer is just this little baby guy back there um, so I don't feel he's getting warm okay so I finally hit so this is the treble control but it's also the on off so I just put a new light bulb in here this light bulb's still bad, and then there's a bulb for the stereo. I gotta check that and see if that's bad too. But um, I just happen to have some bulbs that fit, so I'll get this one in, and I'll check this one for the stereo light. So we got a little bit of problem with the stereo bulb that um, it's actually a two volt bulb, and um, tried replacing it with a six volt one and it didn't work and then I checked it but uh, maybe I'll try replacing it with an LED okay so I think I'm gonna start by recapping this um, this amplifier board here and then we'll work our way over to here and uh, get that all fixed up first and so yeah let's just get started That makes it pretty easy. Well, that sure looks nicer. Now let's just let's take a look at some of these capacitors. The ones I looked at so far, not great. So here's a hundred microfarad. It's about twice as twice what it should be. I 
And this is a 5 microfarad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's another 5. This one's a little higher voltage though. Yeah, they're just in terrible condition. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, they're terrible. So I'm glad I replaced them. Let's uh, turn it on and see what we got. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. It's getting there. Okay, so now I'm going to replace these guys here, which are the 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 coupling caps uh, that are going to the the because this amplifier. Yeah, you probably can't see that, but this amplifier has um, your reference to ground and then 30 volts. And so you're the center of your um, center of your output is actually half of the, the, the rail voltage. So then this capacitor right here is what brings that uh, which takes out that DC offset. So we're just going to take those babies out. Mm, it looks like it's getting stopped on that screw. There it goes. There's that one in, but this one looks like it's going to be a lot harder to get out. Well, this is mildly interesting. This one was just broken right off. That's not going to work. Well, I do have some hum now that everything else is sounding great. Um, I do have some hum. And I think what I'm going to do is there's the bottom of the cap, the um, filtering cap, and uh, I think I can get this guy in there pretty easily, but um, I don't want that flapping around. So I think I'm just going to cut the common here, and uh, just this wire right here. I think that's all I need to do to kind of isolate it. Yeah, because we're jumpered across right here. So if I just cut that, solder that to there. Well, there it is. This cap's a little larger than the uh, Original. This is the same size. I wish I could have made that a little bit bigger, but I didn't have anything around. So let's try it out, see if it has that hum. So I made a big mistake when I did this the first time. I had the negatives going to ground, but that's not the way this thing works. Is that if we look here and we put this to this and this to this. It's actually that the whole circuit is negative, right? And I knew that, but I wasn't paying attention. And so I put these in backwards and I flipped it on and the dim bulb tester <laughs> flashed at me and I was like, okay, well, something screwed up here. And so, uh, so yeah, I pulled one of the caps and all of a sudden the dim bulb 
tester went out and um, quickly realized what the problem is, is that these have to be, um, the minus has to be going to the outside of the rectifier like that. Otherwise these things, they just started pulling a bunch of current. So, um, so yeah. So I don't know, this one's a little oversized. This one is the size that it uh, originally had, but I think it could be a little bit bigger, but I didn't have anything. So it's actually sounding kind of good. So next I want to fix the uh, dial cord. Okay, so I think I'm gonna fix up the dial string on here. And um, yeah, it's pretty bad, nothing left of it. And um, so since this is Minnesota, I have a ice fishing tip up here and I'm gonna use a string off it. And uh, yeah, so. I got the, the Sam's Photofax. Sam's Photofax, and it does show how to do the dial cord. And um, so I'm just going to follow those directions as best I can. And um, I think at the same time, I'll clean this off, get this off here, and clean this as well. Yeah, that's quite dirty in there. It looks like it should be black. Yeah, it's all cleaned up though, but that looks beautiful. Oh, got a little more there. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so I took the existing string and I'm just kind of lining it up. And there's the break right there. And man, this thing goes on for a long time. All the way down to there. So I'm just going to try to get them spaced the same way. And then I'll take that and move it on to the other string in the same place. I hope that works. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I mean, it was a lot of screwing around, getting the tension right, getting everything, <laughs> getting the di turn direction here. But if I go to, I've got my signal generator at 108. And it's pretty close. I just want that when I'm here, I'm at the end of my... Um, the tuning capacitor and when I'm down at the other end and that goes quite a bit further further but um, so I'll have to get that work on the alignment a little bit to um, get that so that it appears right there. So uh, at 90 megacycles we want 18, 19, and 20. Okay. Okay, so we got our our dial right on there, and and so that this screw right here is the one. I 
that um, is getting us there. And we turned it in quite a ways. But then this second one kind of also has an effect. So that's looking pretty good. So now we're going to go up to 108. Yeah, I don't hear anything. So for 108, so for the upper end, we want 21, 22, and 23. And that is uh, this capacitor, this capacitor, and where's 21? Nothing. Hey, it's Don and Steve. You know, this isn't actually live right now. I'm a television star. I've been told to let you buy me any sleep. I'm not sure we need to go there. There we go. to a song wrong. Oh, that's fun. And um, and the reason why this came to mind is... this entire administration delivering straightforward evidence-based science Okay, so let's mess around with AM. So we're gonna generate a frequency of 455 kilohertz, put the tuning gain fully open, DC probe to point A, and adjust A1 through A5. <coughs> and A1 through A5 are these tuning A1. I mean, I don't know what this is point. Oh, okay, A1, A2, and A3, and A4 and A5. So we're gonna wanna, let's see, and where's A? Okay, so A is right here. Okay, we'll do that. So as best I can tell, like I said, this tuner's different. It's not as fancy as what I have the schematic for. It wants you to go to the place where it's connected to the meter and then looks like we've got about uh, 20 millivolts going to the um, to the meter and you can see that the meter is kind of pegged out and watch as I shut the signal generator off
So now this is very strange. <clears throat> I couldn't really get it working the way I wanted. Now, so this is really strange. So I have my signal generator set up to 650 kilohertz and uh, I'm just modulating a signal here. Right? And um, if I come down here, I'm picking it up <laughs> right here. Well, I should be picking it up all the way down here. And um, that makes me a little nervous. That's a lot, lot of distance to make, but we'll see. I can kind of adjust my transformers a little bit to kind of bring the signal up. That one doesn't seem to be making a difference, which makes me kind of wonder. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to move that down. Okay, set it to 1640 kilo, kilocycles and um, adjust A6. And then A6 is that center screw terminal there. So A6 is that center screw terminal. So I have my signal generator set at um, 600 kilocycles. Then I can pick that up. So if I move it a little bit, Okay, so now I'm at 1.6 again. And now that I got the bottom end uh, aligned, now I can come here. And then. So there's 1.6. Then if I set it to, uh, let's, 600 kilohertz. Come down here. They're off just a little bit. So I'm gonna mess with these two transformers. This one right here makes the biggest difference and then this one has a little bit of effect on the amplitude. And, uh, and there you see my coil of wire. So let's just um, see if we can walk this down. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Every once in a while it just stops.
Okay, so there, that's right on 600. And then um, if I look at my scope, I can tune my transformers. You can see that they're right at peak. We're pretty close. So that looks pretty good. So now let's try to go back up to 1.6. Set my signal generator. And there it is. So here's something kind of interesting. So this meter seemed to kind of start right in the middle and then when you hit a hard station it would bottom out and um, so that's a pretty good station there. Anyway, it was very easy to adjust. Um, there's like a little lever right in here that you can move up or down to set the zero spot on the um, on the on the meter. And so I just took a little screwdriver, just gently moved it down a little bit, and that that adjusted that that front. Um, so if I shut it off, I mean, I should move it a little bit down and I think it'll be perfect. So, so it's a little weird on this power supply. So you've got, you come in, you go through this 2.2 meg resistor to ground and it's unpolarized, right? So this might be the power. Then you have kind of a double capacitor on either side of this. I don't know, it's a little bit strange. I'm gonna replace the cord, but, but I'm gonna put on a polarized cord. I noticed if I was touching the case, I would get a little bit of a shock, not a, I mean, just really light. Um, that must be, I must have had it plugged in um, so that the power was coming through here onto the chassis. So I'm just gonna put it polarized so that I make sure that um, the power is coming in like that. I mean, it's a little weird anyway, but uh, yeah, but I'm not going to mess with this. This is a, a ceramic cap and uh, the 2.2 meg is good. So I'm just going to put on a new cord and make sure that, you know, that the common wire is coming down to ground. Okay, so here's that cap. It's kind of a double cap. It's got kind of a, <clears throat> it's actually two caps kind of compressed on each other and so um, so yeah so I'm just gonna pull out this cord and uh, here I've got another one here and I'm just gonna clip the end off here and <clears throat> on this plug this is the neutral side here and so I'm just gonna make sure that um, that's on the side that's not going to the chassis through the 2 meg. Alright, so there it is. It always takes me longer than I wanted to. I usually hit that with the iron, but <clears throat> yeah, it always takes me longer than I wanted to to get the new cords in, but there it is. And um, <clears throat> And I got some bulbs in. And so let's see if we can get a, a bulb in for that stereo light. Let's 
see how well it works first. So here's our crossover network, and um, these capacitors here are nonpolar, but they're not very good either. So I'm going to replace them with some nonpolar capacitors. I don't have, they're 8 microfarads, and I don't have those, so I'll just put two uh, 4.7s together, and that's as close as we're going to get. So this has a little bulb right out the front here. Of course, that bulb's burned out too. So that makes all of them. So I'm looking at the phonograph here, and um, if you turn on here, you see this wheel here. You hear that noise? The rubber is hard as a rock, and it's cracked. And um, also, we're not getting anything in from the phono, so I'm not even going to take a look at it because I think. To get a wheel like this is, you know, about $28. I saw one for sale. But um, I don't really think it's worth fixing. And uh, so instead what I'm going to do is I've got this, uh, it's kind of torn up because I was opening it. But I've just got a Bluetooth adapter and I'm going to put that into the aux port. And I think that's going to be um, really the way this will probably be used. So... Yeah, let's get to that. And so I've just got a test signal coming into, coming out from my signal generator into the plug for the um, the Bluetooth that I put in, which is actually the aux. And um, and I have that coming into my test panel. Here you can hear. Just have it going into eight ohms, and um, so then I can. Turn up my output signal, and then you can adjust the the balance to properly match up those two signals. Pretty easy. And then um, let's see if we can crank it up. See where it starts to clip. So right about seven point seven five. So 7.75 squared divided by 8. So we've got, you know, it's about 7.5 watts. Not a lot, but I think it sounds all right. Box Astrosonic uh, Repair and Restoration. Uh, this was a pretty fun project. I, the, I thought that the, the, the whole thing was pretty high quality and so it was kind of nice working on it. Circuit boards were really nice to work on and um, luckily I didn't have any problems with the transistors but all the capacitors had to go and I replaced those. 
but I think it sounds pretty good. I don't know that the spe internal speakers are the best. I think if I really wanted to use this for playing music, I'd use some external speakers, but um, the stereo portion seems to work great. And uh, FM works well, the AM works well, and I added Bluetooth to it to make it a little bit easier to use it in a modern environment. This record player, I didn't fix it. The, uh, the rubber on the wheels was hard, and um, I would have had to replace those, and I didn't. So, I left that. But, I don't know, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe, and join me again for the next time. I try to take something apart or put it back together. Thanks for watching.